What do I think about street preachers? Are they rude? Well, here's what I think. What's up, everybody? We have another interesting question today from our SFP Swordsmith community. And by the way, if you guys are not yet members of our SFP Swordsmith community, go to sfpswordsmith.com. When you guys get there, you guys can sign up for free or you guys can sign up as a Swordsmith, which is a monthly supporter uh, subscription based thing. You guys can sign up for free or you guys can sign up as a monthly supporter to become a Swordsmith and unlock Swordsmith courses. Once you guys get there, you guys can go to questions and ask your questions there. Today, we have a an interesting question from our brother, Little Light. Here's what he has to say. Is this being rude and unchristlike? I have seen a few street pastors or preachers on YouTube saying not to touch me or I'm not too quick to lay hands with people I don't know. Lay hands meaning what? Maybe that means to fight that person? Is that what it, that means? I'm thinking that's what that means. Um, some believe that if you touch someone who is a blissful sinner, that whatever inner demons they have on them can transfer to you thus bring bring on them curses i don't know if, i don't know if that's necessarily true um, i have heard this verse being used to make their point wherefore come out of come out from among them and be ye separate said the lord and touch not the unclean thing and i will receive you and and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters said the lord almighty second corinthians 6 17 through 18. Is this biblical to be this way around people in public when preaching? I know God tells us to be holy, but I believe this is being taken out of context, even though I believe you shouldn't entertain the thought of sin or be around those who do sin blissfully. Thanks. Well, yeah. So what I think about street preaching, uh, first of all, um, there's a way that you can do it that, that it doesn't cause for people to be rude to you. And it doesn't cost you to be rude to people. I think when you're doing street preaching and things like that, you can come across a lot of different people, different walks of life, and they can be rude to you, depending on how you're saying things. And they can also not be rude to you and be nice to you, be kind to you. Um, depending on, I guess it depends on the person. It depends on how you're um, preaching to them, right? I've seen many, many street preachers that they, they're very rude. Uh, and I don't think it's a good way to show Christ's character. Yes, you can say uh, Christ called the Pharisees a brood of vipers, and called them, called them this name or whatever. But these are Pharisees. These are people who should know better. And so he was correcting them on a lot of, a lot of different issues. And so Christ would call them, you know, brood of vipers, hypocrites, all these things, because they knew what they're supposed to be doing, but they weren't doing it. So they knew better. Um, but to people who don't know better, especially when I, I see these street preachers going up to, you know, especially Pride Month and things like that, you know, and uh, Pride Parades and whatever, um, street preachers would go there and they know exactly what's going on. And they're still provoking these people. I would say that this is not the best display of Christ-like behavior going over there and telling people, hey, you guys are going to hell and blah, blah, blah. Now, I've seen some people repent from homosexuality and other things after some street preacher goes there and, you know, and, and starts acting all rude to them. I've seen that happen before, so it's possible to repent and it's possible to, for God to open your mind by street preachers that are even, even though they're rude. It's possible that God can use that, of course. But I don't think that's the best display of Christ because it's just, it's nothing but yelling at each other. If you guys have seen some of these street preaching going on, it's nothing but yelling at each other, punching, calling people names, being rude. To me, and this is just my opinion on this, to me, it's very prideful. There are Christians out there that are prideful and they want to say what they want to say and they don't care about relationships. They just want to say whatever they want to say and they don't actually uh, nurture a relationship with the person in order to win them. Remember what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9 and verse 20. He says, Unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law and to them that, without, that are without the law as without the law 
being not without law to God, but under the law under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without law. Now, this is not ta- this is not saying you become gay in order to win the gays. No, simply what he is saying here is to meet them where they are, to have a relationship with them, and so that you can lead them to the truth. And I don't see a lot of that going on in the in, in the street preaching and things like that when they're when they're preaching and 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 they're saying all these things about gay people and pride parade and they're saying all these rude things and some people might not know how to interact with christians who know the law and it is up to us to show them how to interact with us it is we have to set the tone because if we set the tone and the very at the very beginning and this happens with street preachers at the very beginning they're rude they're on their um what what you call that thing the the megaphone or whatever it's called and they're saying all these things that offend people, that offend the you know the the uh, gay community. Even though it's true, some of the things that they're saying is yeah, of course they need to repent and things like that. Yeah, some of those things are true. It is true that any sinner will n- need to repent, of course, because if you don't repent, you can't make it to the kingdom of heaven. But who's to say that they want to be in the kingdom of he- kingdom of heaven? You got to first place that desire in them, and you don't place that desire in them by forcing yourself, forcing this on them. Christ never forced himself. Remember, go to Luke 13, um, starting from verse 22. And he went through the cities and the villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall say unto, he shall answer and say unto you, I know ye not whence ye are. So here Jesus says that the master can lock the door, can shut the door, and those who are outside have to knock. Okay, now we go the other way around. Let's go to Revelation 3 and verse 20. He says now, Jesus Christ says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's not going to force himself in. He's knocking. Just like we don't force ourselves uh, into the in, into the into another person's space, we have to knock. We have to be gentle, right? He says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If a man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me." So he he stands at at the door and knocks. He's a gentleman. He stands at the door and knocks. He doesn't force there's no forcing there. He doesn't force us to believe in him. He just, he, in fact, remember what he says? Uh, be, right before he, he was about to get crucified, he says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So he has to be lifted up so that he can draw. It's not, a, it's not forcing. He's not going to, he's going to, he's not going to force. That word to draw means to attract. To draw means to attract. I will draw, I will attract all men unto me, he says, if I be lifted up. And yes, I believe that it's rude. If you want to set the tone in that way, hey, uh, gay people are going to hell and blah, blah, blah. You guys are going to burn an eternal fire and, you know, all these things. What do you think they're going to, well, duh, you know, like, what do you think they're going to, how, how do you think they're going to respond to that? They're not going to respond in a good way. <laughs> they're not going to respond in a good way. They're going to respond. Um, the way that you set the tone, they're going to sp- respond in the same tone and it's going to escalate. And I've seen this time and time and time again. That's why I don't do street preaching because I see all these things um, on video and on YouTube. There are a bunch of street preachers. I think like two of them, two prominent ones who do this. And it's not a good way to draw men unto Christ. We have to lift up Christ. And with the way that we lift up Christ is by displaying his character, the character of love. Remember, it says in 1 John 4 and verse 8, God is love. God is love, and we have to reflect that character. If we Once we re- reflect that character, then we can lead them to Christ. And then p- people might be so intrigued, and this has had happened to me before. People have been so intrigued um, that we are showing them Christ. 
that they want to know more about this. They want to know more about this lifestyle. How, why, are, why do you have so much faith? Why do you have so much faith in Christ? Why are you like this? Why are you so generous? Why are you so kind? And people that are not believers become believers. And it's, it's not because of me. If it was up to me, I'd be the most selfish human being on earth. But we have to display the character of Christ, and that's the only way. So yes, I believe that it is rude. Uh, if you, you say, I, I don't know if this means, um, over here, if this means laying hands on people, meaning like uh, you're going um, you know, to, the person that's saying this is going to beat up the person who's touching them. I don't know what. What that means, if that's the case, Christ never did that. He never beat anybody. <laughs> uh, now, some people might might quote when Jesus Christ overturned tables and things like that, and, and it says that he took whips and drove people away. You don't have to drive. You don't have to hit someone to drive someone away. You can just brandish the the whip to drive someone away. And even the the, the you know the donkeys and the the goats and things like that that they were selling in the in the temple, you can just, you know, you can drive them away just by doing this. If you have a, if you have a gun, if you, you can drive someone away just by brandishing the gun and just showing, Hey, I got a gun. You can drive them away. You don't have to shoot at them. You don't have to shoot at the, at the person to drive them away. But uh, anyways, yeah, I do believe that this is, it, it would be rude if you're a street preacher. Now there are, there are some street preaching that I did see that I do like um, one of them would be like a um, what's that guy's name from Living Waters the guy the old man the guy who's uh, I believe he's Australian this guy who's this guy this guy with the beard the glasses what's his name again Ray Comfort Ray Comfort now Ray Comfort street preaching I think that's a good example of street preaching because he he, he goes there he talks with the people he doesn't Tell people, hey, you're going to hell and you're blah, blah, you know what I mean? He doesn't, he doesn't do that. But his tone, his tone was, is very good. The, the way that he uses his voice he is not rude. Um, although he does sometimes impose his ideas on others, sometimes. But he's not rude. Uh, his tone is good. And so I, I believe that's the type of street preaching. If you're going to do street preaching, it would be, that would be the best way. That Ray Comfort. Would be the that would be the best way. I don't believe in a lot of Ray Comfort's ideas, but when it comes to street preaching, that would be the best way. It's not rude, like some others out there. I just want to take this time to thank our supporters via PayPal. Just want to say thank you, Eleanor. Thank you, Ziomara. Thank you, Paul and Viola or Viola for the donations on uh, PayPal. And if you guys want to support this channel, uh, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv via PayPal. The link is in the description box below. Or you guys can purchase one of these, Revelation verse by verse. For those of you guys who are having trouble with the book of Revelation, this goes through the book of Revelation verse by verse. Links for these are also in the description box below or you guys can purchase some sfp hats and merch and t-shirts and things like that backpacks links are also in the description box sfp merch dot shop so thank you guys again and i hope that i did answer this to your satisfaction little light but this verse is not really talking about you know touching people in that way or punching people or whatever you don't you know touching someone who is unclean meaning someone who is a sinner touching them you don't get their their demon by by touching as long as you, you know because Jesus touched people he did not receive a demon right Jesus touched a demon possessed person he did not receive that demon uh Peter touched a demon possessed person did not receive that demon uh, Jesus also touched a person who is who is unclean who is considered unclean he he touched someone who has leprosy he did not get the leprosy. You see what I mean? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17, and let's look at the context. 2 Corinthians, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what conquered hath Christ with Belial, or, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what are... 
And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So this is not really talking about physical touching. This is, means don't be unequally yoked. Don't believe what they believe. Um, so th there's a spiritual aspect to this. It's not really a physical thing where you're touching someone. Oh, I got a demon. No. It says here, don't be, don't be unequally yoked. Meaning don't believe what they believe. Okay? So you can touch if you want. You know, some, sometimes people just need a little pat on the back and, you know, to tell them about Christ. You're not going to get a demon. <laughs> You're not going to get a demon. You just need a pat on the back and, you know, tell them, hey, Christ loves you or whatever, whatever the situation may be. You're not going to get a demon by touching them. Again, this is talking about beliefs. If you believe and then you're joined together with this person and they influence your belief and you start, you know, start changing your beliefs, that's what that means. All right. So I hope I answered that properly and correctly and to your satisfaction. Um, thank you guys again for coming in, tuning in. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Avocado grease. See you guys later. We cannot, we cannot afford to let the critical goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius slip out of our reach. And those impacts are getting worse and could potentially be irreversible. The debate over pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib is uh, quite a debate. You know, some people think they're 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 pre-trib. They believe Jesus is coming before the tribulation, or he's coming in the middle of the tribulation, or he's coming at the end of the tribulation. We don't know for sure when Jesus will return, but God does give us several signs, several markers that we know that the end will be near. Many of those are seen in Matthew 24. We have things like wars, rumors of wars. Um, pestilences and earthquakes and all these events. You know, there are a lot of dear Christians that are mixed up regarding the, um, the events, the chronology of the coming of the Lord. Uh, all Christians agree there's going to be a tribulation. You can't escape where Jesus says in Matthew 24, there's a time of trouble such as there never has been coming. Jesus is actually quoting Daniel chapter 12. Where Daniel says in chapter 12, at that time Michael will stand up, the great prince that stands for the children of thy people, and there will be a time of trouble such as there never has been, even under that same time. So they all agree there is this great tribulation that you read about. As you look at all the passages regarding the second coming, you realize these are things that you're going to be able to see. Every eye shall see him. The elements are melting with fervent heat. I, I don't know if you've ever been in a sauna. Um, we know it gets past 120, 130. You begin to feel it. And I, I don't know exactly what temperature elements begin to burn up, but I'm sure it's going to be quite hot. And so that's not something that you could sort of ignore. The Bible is clear that we are going to hear Jesus come back with a great sound of a trumpet. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 16, the Bible actually says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He's coming back shouting with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. So again, you don't see that in many of the ideology and, and, the, and the teachings of today uh, in modern Christianity. Most of them teach it's a secret silent event. But the Bible says when Jesus Christ comes back, He's going to be shouting in all of His power and glory. He's going to be excited to see His bride, whom He has been separated from for so long.